There's been just so much that he's done to bring me out of the place where I was, which was thoroughly depressed and, and suicidal and, and drug abuse and alcohol abuse, um, addicted to narcotics, stealing narcotics from what would have been my grandmother-in-law and, uh, and, and totaling out vehicles, flipping vehicles. <laughs> just a mess, my life was a mess. It's just so true. There's a, a scripture that says a bruised reed he won't break and a smoldering wick he won't put out until justice is carried out. And he's had so much mercy on me to get me from the place where I was uh, to the place where I am today. I was in such darkness as a young man. Like I, I, I was convinced that I understood the conception of the world. I believed in, in evolution and, and, uh, and, I, and I was probably agnostic at best for most of my uh, younger life. That whole system of thought made sense to me. I thought we came from a single cell and, uh, and that inevitably the conclusion was that we were uh, the product of chance. And, uh, and the problem with all that, of course, is that it left me feeling very much like there was no meaning to anything. I don't really see how you can avoid that if, if you think that way. The inevitable conclusion is that we're all dust to dust we will return and even though there is truth to that we are also spirit and that was what i needed to know that i didn't know um, is that there was more to it than just this flesh you know uh, and i was in misery trying to figure that out there were at least two times that i tried to take my life one time i literally had to rush to the hospital and drink activated charcoal and all that I remember after I became friends with some Christians that I went to one of their apartments once and on their wall they had a note card that on it was written, um, I think it's from Jeremiah where he says, seek me and you'll find me when you seek me with all your heart. And I remember reading that and being like, that's in the Bible? Like God said that, you know, <laughs> it just blew my mind because to me that was almost like the invitation for an experiment. God is there and he himself is saying that you have to seek him in order to find him. And I was so fascinated by that and it set me on course for a journey that was about to be the next 10 years of my life. And I had no idea I was on a collision course for encounter after encounter with God. One of the most significant things he did during that season of seeking was he answered a question for me in a really spectacular way. And the question was, is the Bible really the inspired word of God, as, as I'd heard pastors say that it was. And for me, it was just difficult to believe because I knew it was written by men. So I asked him, I said, you need to show me if this word is your word, like if this Bible, if these books that are compiled together um, are actually something that you have specifically left for us to encounter you. Uh, and what happened was I ended up having a dream shortly thereafter I started asking that question. And in the dream, I was running through the wilderness with a bunch of my friends at the time, uh, except we were all kids. We were all maybe preschool, kindergarten age, and we're running through the, this wilderness. It was like the whole world was just trees. And I remember we were all looking for one specific thing. We didn't know what it was, but we had a sense that we would know it when we saw it. And lo and behold, uh, at one point running along through the woods, there's this gigantic skyscraper of a tree. And my friend Jordan put his hands like this and, and gave me a boost up the side of the tree. And as I was going up it, I noticed the alligator scale pattern of the bark and the gentle ferny needle. And I got my hands up on a ledge that I had previously not been able to see. And as I pulled myself up, I noticed I was holding onto the bottom of an E. And there were two letters, E-W, like someone had carved their initials into the tree. And I asked myself, like, whose initials are EW? And I heard a voice from above the canopy say, eternal word. And what was really fascinating was that as I got my head up over the edge, it looked like when somebody puts a mirror to another mirror and you could see it just stretches on for eternity in either mirror. And it looked like that as I came around the corner of the E, I could see into the tree, it's just stretched on forever and there was light coming out from the center of the tree. I called out to my friends, I said, I'm going in. I'm not coming back, this is what we were looking for. And I woke up from the dream. And I took that as a response from God, uh, and he gave me an interpretation to the dream 
uh, right away, which was that we're in a wilderness of thought. And, and all of these trees are the thoughts and theologies and ideologies of men. And, uh, and here in the middle, one that looks so much like the rest on the outside, but it was so significantly different in that it was more ancient than all the others. And not only that, but I realized it wasn't even that someone had carved their initials into this tree. It was that the E and the W, the light that was in the middle had always been there and everything else had come from that specific place. Uh, so I was so excited and I started telling everybody about this dream. I had a friend, Jonathan, uh, would come with me uh, even going back to the party scene and, and whatever we would do, he would be with me and I would tell people this dream and all the details and he knew them well. And finally, it was two years later that uh, I took Jonathan on a trip with me to Ireland. See, all those two years up until that point, I had been looking for the species of tree that, that I saw in the dream because I knew it was significant and I never really could find that exact thing. And here we are in Ireland all this time later coming down the side of this mountain and I put my hand up on a tree to peek out over the, the edge of a cliff and I noticed that the alligator scale pattern is there in the bark and that gentle ferny kind of soft needle is there. And I look and Jonathan's coming down the path behind me and I say, this is the tree from the dream. And he says, yeah, it looks exactly like what you've always described. And I thought to myself, wouldn't it be strange if EW was carved somewhere on this tree? And lo and behold, no word of a lie, I lifted up my hand and underneath the, the palm of my hand was EW carved on the tree. It really squashed the thought for me that, uh, that I had things figured out. And I realized that I was trying to size up the whole world through this peephole of a perspective. And really, God has a limitless perspective. That word is uh, not just a thought, not just a random religion in the wilderness of man-made thoughts, but Jesus is the author of, of life. He is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, and He has always been. Everything else that is, is because of Him. It was made through Him. And He is so easy looking from the outside to dismiss as just another good teacher or another uh, a, a person with another idea. But He's God in the flesh.